I'm in Miami to check out the USA's first ever flying car. We're going to meet the $300,000 supercar of the future. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today here at Doroni. We're going to take a look at the very first eVTOL, the first of its type to ever take flight here in the United States. And I'm going to pop on the VR headset to see what it's all about. This is the prototype that took flight right here in the warehouse, the first eVTOL to do so in the entire country. And we're gonna explain a little bit more about what that means when we're joined in a moment by the CEO of Doroni, Darone Merdinger. Now I've been lucky to experience some pretty unusual vehicles over the years. For example, the Mercedes Vision AVTR, a collaboration between Mercedes-Benz and James Cameron, the director of the Avatar movie franchise, which is literally a bubble controlled via a trackpad that we drove down Hollywood Boulevard. I've also been on the Las Vegas Strip in the original Batmobile. When it comes to more traditional cars, things like the Maybach Landerlei G-Wagon, a Mercedes G-Wagon G650 with a V12 with a convertible folding roof and all the luxuries of a Maybach on safari in South Africa filming the wild animals. Also, cars that have no windshield, things like the Lamborghini Aventador J, but this, this is the future. I've flown cars before in a very different sense of the word. In fact, three of the Shmimobiles, my Ford GT, AMG GT Black Series, and Zenvo TSRS have all been loaded into the belly of a cargo plane and taken to different continents. But we're talking today about personal transportation, about being able to grab the wheel, or in this case, not the wheel, and fly yourself, avoiding traffic on the roads, taking a more three-dimensional attitude towards transport, towards going places. And that's what today we're here to find out all about. The future is closer than we think, but we're here in Florida at Daroni Aerospace HQ. Let's go in, find Daroni, and find out how the H1 works. Welcome to Daroni. It's good to be here. We've got a lot to learn about. Oh yeah. Because this is, this is the future. The, fu the future is now, quite yeah. literally. C can we go back to basics? What is an EV toll? So, so an EV toll is basically the new definition of what we used to call a flying car. It's an electric, vertical, takeoff and landing vehicle. So it's all about electric and uh, this is what we're doing basically. A personal machine that you can use to skip traffic jams, take a direct route and enjoy the view. Yeah, in our case it's, it's personal. There are EV tolls out there. Most of them are air taxi for ride sharing. What we're doing is a, is a personal one. So it's a two seater basically, total of 500 pound payload that uh, you just go out from your two car garage. Instead of going to a two dimensional road, you'll be going up. So <laughs> it's like a drone. This is, I, I love the, the relating of this to the supercar world, right? Two seats about enjoyment, about the experience, about a new world, forefront of technology, de development, and we're gonna have a run through of the systems and screens and, and right, the, right. the controls and things, because I, I, I'm absolutely fascinated by it all, but you started this, this dream seven or eight years ago. Yeah, I started this dream uh, about seven years ago, basically, and at the point where I saw the, the, how, you know, how a drone works, how simple it is, and I understand that this is how you know, the, the future is going to shape for flying cars because we all knew flying cars were coming, we just didn't know when they're coming and how they're going to be coming. And there was a lot of you know, trial and error, but because of the drone technology, we understand that this is the technology that will help us uh, move forward. So what you see here, this is a full-size scale uh, cockpit that we made from carbon fiber composites. And this is, we, we completed that in, in last year in July for Oshkosh Air Show. And we tested there, like thousands of people already do it. But this is a couple of uh, other purposes. One of them, uh, you know, you see how it works, how it functions, the ergonomics of it. But the other thing is also we added a simulator. So you, has, you actually fly inside, getting that experience of, you know, of controlling the, the drone. Which I think is what I'm going to be trying in a moment. But it's, it's fairly practical. I, I'm in my head obviously making the comparisons with a car uh, in terms of seats. You've got some luggage space behind, um, screens and controls. Can we, can we unlock it and start Yeah, it? yeah. So fly your car, next time will be the phone. So you'll be able to pop it open from your mobile phone. Yep, from yep. the door open because you want to park it in outside. So, you know. Perfect. Imagine the door is open. Yep, the door is <laughs> Coming open to the already. inside. Yep, going to the inside. Okay. Usually you put the seat belts, right? You already did the, you know, you walk around, you see that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Now we have two joysticks here. 
one joystick you, it's enough to fly with the one joystick we have two just you know for redundancy also if you're a left or, or right pilot right yep. we'll notice. okay so let's say I'm sitting here and I'm pressing this button hello and welcome to Deroni please remain seated until the system check Check so, so now what happened is it runs diagnostics. So unlike in a regular car, uh, when you run diagnostics, it will run you know through through oil, for fume, from you know gas, you know the vibration. There's a lot of explosion. There's a lot of high friction in that motor. This is all electric. So we run diagnostics in electrical system. You get a fairly accurate reading, and it's a very important. So everything at this point is green. Uh, if it will not be green. If it, it's not something, there's an error, he will not be green, it will be red, so basically you cannot, you know, cannot do anything at this point. Uh, but in this case, it's green, right? So the next is, now we're sitting in, a, in a, this, the garage, right? And then we're just, you know, pushing forward, we basically taxiing outside of the garage. Yep. Okay, now, you know, let's say 10 meters or 10 yards, we're in the street. And instead of just starting to drive like a regular yeah. car and driving everywhere, we would just go vertical so how do we do it we have two modalities and one is just you know very simple take off we click that button here we have a predetermined altitude let's say of uh of let's say 206 feet because we know this is the clearance we have you know mm -hmm. where you're living and then auto takeoff it takes <laughs> off there's uh it now stands in the air at about 200 feet there's a camera uh, uh basically there's a camera all around you that you can get, you know, understand where you are. Uh, if you wanna, basically, if you wanna land again, I will tell you exactly where the spot is, so yep. you cannot, you know. Let's um, now we're in the air anyway. So let's say I wanna, uh, um, I wanna go forward. I take the stick, and what I do is just push it forward. Yep. Fly forward. Yeah. Turn. You know, all these bank yaws. You know, it, it's the same backward. I, mean, I wanna, you know, fly up higher. I'm going like this, or you yep. know, this is how I'm using it. And we have another throttle here that basically pushes it to give an extra power so you fly faster. And you can navigate? Yeah, so this is one way. Um, so another way is simply just to give, you know, to put an address here. Let's say there's a map and um, I want to go to this place. It will basically calculate the distance, the time, the battery, and all the information I need. It gives you uh, uh, the wind condition, uh, temperatures, um, and if there's a place that you cannot fly directly, like it's, uh, it's an airport or the geofencing will not allow you to create that route ar around it. So also the duct fans are quieter and more efficient in terms of you know, uh, energy consumption because okay. it throws all the energies downwards and also you know, it, looks, it looks better. In so so this is in terms of redundancies. Another thing is, if there's a failure, we have two propellers in each duct. If there's a failure in one propeller here, or maybe one propeller here, the system self-stabilizes itself and uh, mm -hmm. basically take care of it. Uh, so this is another bodies carbon fiber monocoque. That means like Formula One, it's stronger, stiffer, um, and in the case of an impact, uh, we w what we're doing is dissipate the energy of the wings of the parts so mm -hmm. you, you know disintegrate will take part of it so there's a multiple layers we believe it's going to be even safer than a regular you know regular helicopter or aircraft uh, obviously you don't need a runway yeah <laughs> no you, pull out, you pull out of your garage <laughs> yeah. and you take <laughs> off yeah it's amazing and then once you've landed yep you just kind of switch it off and once you land it you taxi back into your garage and yep. you're done and you charge it that's it that's it yeah case, uh, keep it simple and uh, you know safe Press it hold, yeah, turn it, it off, yeah. and then and then that's it. Step that's on it. out, you're back at yeah, home. You're back at home. Here in the warehouse then, yeah. you flew for the first time. Yeah, I, I, we flew here and, uh, and to, fly in, to fly such a big vehicle inside a warehouse, I'm not sure, I didn't, I didn't see any other vehicles at that size that can fly you know, that accurately inside you know, such a relatively small place. And we should say, because when you do inside, obviously the force of the air that's moving around creates the instability. Yeah, there are a lot it's of very hard. Exactly. There's there are a lot of turbulences. There's the ground effect. There's you know the the sky the ceiling and also the the, the you know turbulences come from the wall and at one time when we tested there was a, a shopping bag we saw going into the circle of that weird you know that okay. thing and you know we we had to land. It won't do anything but just in case. But 
staying in the air. The thing with eVTOL, the biggest issue is really to be able to sustain uh, you know, control your, 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 your space or your, where you are in the three-dimensional world and move forward and backward and be able to control it. Once you are able to control it, that means you achieve that goal. Because from that end, you, you just have to you know, create a better efficient machine, better, better battery, maybe better consumption, you know, more aerodynamics. But really the challenge is how you maintain stability, you know, especially when the person inside. And yep. you know, to our understanding, we're the first one in the US to have a person inside, a personal eVTOL, <laughs> any eVTOL to that. To that <laughs> which, is, which is incredible. I mean, yeah. just standing here and looking at the, the different parts, the quadricopter style, but carbon yeah. fiber used extensively, lightweight yeah. materials, strength, rigidity, everything that comes with it. But size-wise, I think this is an interesting thing, comparing to what we know of as a car now, right? We think of a car as a very fixed format. It has to be this certain size and shape, and it has to drive in the same kind of way and go in that format. But the future of the car can be totally different. So we have, you know, the cockpit there, or you show how it works, you're already flying inside. This is a full scale, although naked, but it's all carbon fiber. And, you know, from that on, it's just how to improve that system. And we already know, we've already been improving that system. So what you see here is something was accomplished uh, February. We're done in February, but we already ahead of that thing already. Yeah. Not far away, how, how long until you're fully kind of up and running with a fully bodied? So the goal is by the end of 24, we have a full, you know, full complete go to market product, hopefully certified. Uh, and this is the goal. And by 2025 to uh, start delivering the first six units. So we're only two <laughs> years away yeah. from this being a reality and private individuals being able to fly themselves in their EV tolls. It's, it's achievable, that's the target, yes. This is amazing. Yeah, it's achievable, this is the target. Uh, because the technology is here, again, you don't have to put like a bunch of scientists to research it, you know, find, you know, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, what kind of propulsion system, everything is already given. It's just improving, make it a perfect machine, you know, it's like a Swiss army knife. You know, you want to have something high quality, you know, very precise, you know, this is what we're doing. It's creating the right package for that target that we're doing. This is uh, the, the skins of it. Um, you know, this is, you know, these are carbon fiber skins, very light. You can, you can feel them, you can heal. But um, we're not sure if we're going to continue with this because we're already going forward with the design of the P2, which is the go-to-market product. This is the P1. The P2 will be basically almost the same as far as sizes but we'll be more efficient in terms of aerodynamics body. So we are investing time and money on the body itself. Um, it's for leisure, you know, play golf, go to places. You can, you can not even go before. You have yachts, you have, want to play, you know, uh, you want to be, you know, live in an airport community, you want to go to work. I mean, there's so many places you want to do shopping. Uh, you think it, it doesn't even have to land, right? You can stay in the air at the same time. You know, I'm thinking about the time. I'm dreaming on, on the future. We have a couple of drinks, you know, in a bar, and then you, you go like kind of tipsy, right? They say, and they say, oh, okay, how can I drive now? But you go like this, say, hey, Droni, and they will come close to you <laughs> or land. Yeah. It, it has that ability already. And then you go like home. It goes like straight up yeah. and direct and down, because it doesn't have to go like this, right? You don't have to, there's no interaction between pedestrians and other obstacles. Obviously there are obstacles, but they're not like this. And the system will detect it and because of you know the collision sensors and other sensors that we're providing that it should be much simpler and even safer as well all the time when i'm you know we're thinking about it we think about how it's easy for kids to use drones today yep. and the drones are amazing so why should this one be more complex <laughs> it, this should be even easier because we want to eliminate pilot's error and, yeah. yeah and the way to eliminate pilot's error is let's is give him safe things that are you know less you, you have to pay attention to them it's a very exciting time. Yeah, amazing time. I mean, this is <laughs> crazy time. I'm telling it to myself, you know, like people don't even understand what's coming, you know? And it's only a year or two away. Yeah, because we're already doing it. I mean, we're already flying inside. Yeah. So why not? You know, we're already doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for my first flight, the VR experience. So let me pop on the headset. And I feel like I'm standing right next to the H1, named H after the hummingbird due to its stability, but literally I have it right next to me. This is really, really, really strange, but I can bring you guys along for the ride. Step on in. Wow, here we are. Okay, let me get ready with my, uh, my flight controls. So to move out, in this case of the garage where we are here, 
we're in the mode to just move on the ground at the moment, then once we've pulled out of the garage onto the driveway, or we could go all the way out onto the road, you press the red button here. That starts everything ready to take off. And up we go. Wow. How cool is this? Miami over there. And then on the controller, I've got the lower lever to pull that and get moving. Although we definitely need to make sure we go up and avoid any collisions. Oh look, here in Fort Lauderdale, we can fly over towards the Guitar Hotel. Wow. But this is what Daron was saying, the view out to the side, the feeling just unlike anything else, the idea that anywhere where you have permission to land, a garden, a public venue, rooftops of car parks, you'll be able to just park and go do your shopping, go do whatever it is and head onwards from there. I'm just enjoying the flight experience. This is, this is pretty crazy, to be honest. This is really pretty crazy. Just in VR, looking around me, imagining this future. And you know, say we want to go to the Hard Rock Hotel, go meet up with some friends, go to the bar. We can land here. You know, they'll have a space, dedicated space to be able to travel to or we can come down to the, uh, the main road outside. What a surreal experience as I uh, maneuver my way down to the front of the, uh, the building here. Look at this. Look at this, we're over the road, choosing to come down. In fact, I can even land literally on the road here. on the road <laughs> stop the vans and now we can drive and park neatly well there we go this the future is here the future is definitely here this is all super intriguing and the things that are happening behind the scenes as well they're only working with the faa the certification all the different rules and requirements but to know that in not all that long, we're going to have this new generation, new era of personal transport, the evolution of the car. And I think that's the thing that takes the massive mind shift back. We've had cars for 100 plus years. We've had this very familiar feeling of hopping into something that drives along a road and we get to the other end. But what about making that three dimensional? What about hopping into something that can pop up into the sky. We've been seeing it in movies for years. We've been thinking about it for years. We've been wondering what this is going to be like. And now it's so close that you can kind of touch it. You can feel it. You know it's coming. It's right there. And to know that they're only at the first here in the United States who have sent an EV toll up with a person on board, a manned EV toll. And to know that that's proving the theory, the philosophy, and these are going to be around $300,000 or so for the production version. You know, that's less than a current Ferrari, current entry Ferrari. That's, that's a serious piece of equipment. I can't wait, to be honest. I can't wait for the idea of it and to what it means really going forwards. Of course, not in city centers immediately. The future might evolve that way. The airspace itself is going to have to evolve into different channels and where things can fly and what they can do. But there will be places where it can be enjoyed. And here in Florida in particular is a great place to be beginning. What a stop here with Daroni to join Daroni to find out more about this and to understand where they're going with it and what's gonna happen next, and what an interesting opportunity it is as well in terms of investment into the company and going forwards from here. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Daroni for inviting me out to come and take a full look through to have a go and to find out a bit more. And thank you, of course, to you guys for your support. That's it for now though, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.